So we're now going to look at some actual uh, Mosquito configuration files. We look at the default, I suppose, Mosquito configuration file that comes packaged with Mosquito. Uh, and then we look at what we want to do in terms of setting up our own Mosquito file to test out a few of the configuration options that we discussed in the previous video. So if you're in your Windows setup and you're in your Mosquito folder, if you look in here, you will see Mosquito configuration file. And if you want to look at that, open up Notepad, mosquito.conf, and it opens up this file, which is quite hefty and a lot of variable uh, variables declared, a lot of things that are commented out. And as you can see with this hash symbol suggests that the comment it's commented out that it's not active in the configuration file, but it basically lists out pretty much every type of option that you have for Mosquito and for MQTT, and you can pick and choose what you want to put in here. That's all great. This file should be kept as a reference. When you're setting up a Mosquito or MQTT broker using Mosquito, first thing you should do is copy this configuration file somewhere and then go ahead and set up your own configuration file where you split it down into your general configuration, you split it down into what you want your listeners to do, and you split it down into if you're setting up any bridges. You can then copy and paste various settings over into that file, and if you want to change anything um, going forward, it's a lot easier to go through a smaller, shorter file that you put together yourself, rather than a long, complicated file such as this one. So that's what we've done, and if I can bring that up, You'll see it in here. I've got one pre-made and not much in it at the moment. Most of the things are commented out, but I have general configuration. I've got listeners that I've set up, the default listener, plus if you want additional listeners. So a broker, as we discussed, can have multiple listeners listening on different ports if you wanted to do that and a few other um, commented out options here. So that's the configuration file I'm going to use for the demonstrations going forward from now on. So another initial point to note about this configuration file is under the default listeners. As we mentioned previously, MQTT will work on certain ports. The default port is generally 1883 and you can specify other ports if you want to. In the case here, I've specified for the default listener. So the main listener that this MQTT broker instance is going to use, I've specified port 1884. If I set up additional listeners, I, specify, I can specify additional ports. So I would make this 1885, this 1886. But for the purposes of this demo, we're going to have one listener, which will be the default listener, and that is going to be listening on port 1884. So if I minimize that, I'll bring it up. If you run Mosquito without specifying a configuration file, Mosquito will just run on all default settings, which will set default it to port 1883. It will default it to um, allowing anonymous connections. Basically, everything will be wide open. So if you want to run Mosquito with a configuration file, then you need to specify where the configuration file is and have it using that. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. This command here is running the Mosquito application, the broker application, and it's specified a path on my computer to the Mosquito file that I've created. And if I run it, Mosquito will now run, and anything that's specified in that configuration file will determine how MQTT is going to run via Mosquito on this machine from here on in. So now if I try and connect with a client, and Previously, we tried to collect with fairly um, simplified client settings, so nothing too mad in the pub publisher here. We will just specify a topic and we'll specify a message. And if I try and connect it here, it'll send it because I'm allowing anonymous connections. If I go back into my configuration file and if I say allow anonymous to false, I save that and I reload the broker. I'll do remote debugging. So the broker is now running. If I try and connect this time, you can see here connections refused. 
because anonymous connections aren't allowed anymore. So what an anonymous connection means is that the client has tried to connect without specifying a username, and that username should ideally be specified somewhere within a file that the um, broker can reference to see if the user is allowed in. So we'll talk about that next. But uh, this is just to get us to grips with these configuration files. So we're now going to look at setting up some form of authentication on the MQTT broker where only pre-approved clients with certain usernames and passwords will be able to access the services of the broker. This will be considered the first level of authentication you could probably use when it comes to your MQTT broker. There is higher levels of authentication, such as using certifications, uh, security certs, and so on. But the first level would be pre-approved usernames with a password to access the broker and could be useful on a level two factory area where you've got a fairly secure network, but you just don't want someone who can plug into a LAN or whatever it might be and be able to access your broker services. So you're looking for something that's pre-approved. Um, Mosquito comes packaged with a tool that will allow you to set up a password for specific usernames. The tool here is the Mosquito password exe and it's fairly straightforward to use so you basically type in the command the, of the application you use the minus c you give the password file a name mtu password file in this case and then you can give it a username and then you'll be asked to put in a password for that user so each client that you connect to whether publish subscribe you can give them a username to access the broker that username matches the username that's in the file and the password that matches in the file they get access to the services of the broker. So we press enter on this. And you're asked for a password. So the password I'm going to use is fairly simple. It's going to be T-E-S-T -E and T-E-S-T. -E Just for the purposes of demo, you'd obviously use something much more complicated if doing this in reality. So that's the password file created. It gets created encrypted. So if you open up the file and have a look at it you will see you can make out what the user is but the password for that user is encrypted only mosquito will know what that is now if you go back into your configuration file to set it up you will allow an anonymous collection false so every client who tries to connect to the broker will have to identify itself with a username and you specify where these usernames are and passwords are using the password file keyword here. In this case, I have it in my Mosquito directory in this file. If I go back into the broker and run the broker, it's now connected. If I take a client, let's say a publisher in this case, and I try and access it without a password, connection is refused. I try and access it with the incorrect password, connection gets refused. The only way to access the services of the broker is to use the proper password and username. In this case, I got the password wrong. It was the wrong case. There we go. You can see the connection has been made. And if we set up a subscriber, the exact same process needs to be done. So username, demo user, password, test, access is allowed. And you can both have the same username and the username is more of a classification of usernames as long as they present with the same username and the appropriate password, password they will get access to the broker. Username shouldn't be confused with what a client ID is. Every time a client communicates with a broker, it communicates a client ID. That's got to be unique. But the username can be a common username across clients uh, or it can be individual to various clients. The client ID is always unique, but the username can be the same as other clients. And that's how you set up one layer of authentication. And again, following good practice for our configuration files, we have our general configuration. All the authentication is here under general configuration. You can do individual authentications for individual listeners in the broker, but in this case, this is a global configuration we've applied across. You can add other usernames, 
you can add other passwords uh, into this file um, and make it as complicated or as secure as you need it to be.